something lovely about being a bully from the plot for a few days and then coming back and seeing if anything's changed. I'm sure it hasn't. Um, today is Tuesday, no, Thursday. Oh my gosh, things have changed. We have orange pumpkins. Look at these. This one over here is really orange. Look. Fantastic. So it's Thursday now. It's late. I'm just coming up to 8 o'clock at night. We're going to pull a carrot, yes. She wants to pull a carrot up. We'll have none left at this rate for Christmas, but never mind. Um... I just want to investigate a few things and pick some beans. We seem to have a few in here ready to go. Not bad for a plant that I just put up a cane. And some nice beans. It really is. Some nice beans on here. Fantastic. There's lots of peas there and still some in flower. So I'm really pleased with the way the raspberry canes look now. They look much tidier. Cabbages are surviving, no caterpillars in there. Yeah, the chilies need water. A couple of beans on here to harvest. And slug is eating its way through the middle of that one, but I'll just eat the bit either side of it. Okay, baby. And another one. They're so slow to produce though. Oh, oh look. We're actually going to take over a harvest of runner beans today rather than just one. Right, what we're actually here for is these potatoes are coming out. I'm not happy with them. In fact, these ones have now got whatever it is. Oh, and there's definitely black marks on these stems. Oh, dear me. Yeah, they're all coming out. We're just going to dig up potatoes. It's not an option to cut the top off and leave them in the ground. I know that's what a lot of people do. But we've got lots and lots of slugs. And the potatoes that we're already taking home are found in are quite badly slug damaged. So I'm just going to take them up. Leave the massive empty bed, but that's the way it is. Right then, carrot. Let me find which one we can take. There's two. Hang on. Sorry, that one's not very big. Um, hang on. Try that one. This one here. Wiggle, wiggle, pop. Oh, another oh, good one. one. Go on, then take the next one to it. No, 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 no. That one there. There you go, two baby carrots for Rue. Happy? Yeah. <laughs> it's all she wanted. Um, how's this looking? Well, it's not been eaten yet, so that's something. The tassels are dying off. So they're going to get ready soon. now. I don't know if it's going to get any bigger. That's getting there. So I'm going to harvest some beans, dig up the potatoes, take that little cucumber there, um, and, and these chilies. You get... Oh, look. I had one courgette, but not anymore. You horrible slimy little thing. That was from my mum. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. Where did they come from? Right, greenhouse chilies are looking sad. Oh, first red one. That will come home with me today. Yeah, they need watering. But they are coming on nicely. So that's what we come up for. So I'm going to get these jobs done. And then I'll show you some bits and bobs afterwards. This, I'm not going to put this video up at the, right now, I don't think. Um, I'll probably just tag it onto something else we do at the weekend. So, okay, see you in a bit. Right, this row seems to have been Sarpamira with a couple of lost one, um, random ones in there. They're just, can you see that? They're not very nice. They don't look very tasty at all. And the yield is quite frankly rubbish. And that's a row. Let's see what's in this plant. So. 
And these ones at home that I have, they have blight and they're coming out tomorrow. And my Valor ones have blight as well. And I've spoken to another couple of people and their Sarpo mirrors all have blight. So I don't know what's going on, if it's a bad seed here or what. Ew, we're not that one. Um, but they're supposed to be blight resistant. But they're obviously not. And the ground is so sticky. So sticky. So there you go. Can you give that another dig? Uh. <clears throat> That's it, I think. Not very many Sarpa Miro that don't look very tasty at all. <sighs> oh well. On to the next one. Just before I water the chilies and go home, this is our little harvest of the day. Got some chilies. Um, we like green chilies, so these are perfect. Um, I think they're Calero chilies. I'm not entirely sure. Um, let me see. No, oh, they're jalapeno. They're not jalapeno. Anyway, they're chilies, and they're not spectacularly hot. Look, our first runner bean harvest. I'm really, really pleased with those. Runner beans, I just absolutely adore them. And, and these dwarf beans, these ones are Ferrari. And they're from Wilkinson's. And when they get their sale on soon, I will be stocking up on these. Next year we're going to have so many of these. They're really, really nice. They're lovely raw. I just like... Let's have a munch. Um, anyway. Let me hold that in my hand. Grumpy Gardener. You commented that you eat your curly beans anyway. So do I. I love. I, I don't mind them at all. But if I were to tree this one, it is actually could actually be a little pig's tail. But what I don't like is, and you see that, they're kind of like scabby. That's what I meant when I said they're disgusting. I don't want to eat that. Or when they get that brown scab on the inside. It's just not very nice. So if they have just that little bit and then the rest is fine, I'll just chop up and I'll put them... I freeze them... Um, I freeze the dwarf French beans whole and then I tend to chop up my um, cobra beans into smaller segments and then I can chuck them into stews and soups and curries and things like that. That's what I do with those. These I eat whole. And these... Um, if you've ever tried the recipe where you dip beans into egg, like mixed up egg, then into breadcrumbs and then bake them in the oven for about 40 minutes until the crispy brown. These beans are the best for it and I could eat a stack, of, I could eat all of those in one go, really, absolutely lovely. So as well as those, we've also got um, our horrible Sarpa mirrors. I'll give them a go, I'll sort through them, see what they're like, and then these. I'd love to tell you what variety they are, I don't know, but they turned out really nice. And they've actually got minimal lenticles on those little white spots, which means they will store, which is makes me... I'm, I'm really pleased with that because a lot of the stuff we've been getting up has got so many of the white spots on. Like, there's a couple with more on than others. But if they've got the white spots, they're not going to store for long. So, And they're quite really clean as well. I'm going to have to watch back through my old videos and find out what they are. And Alan's terrible for putting the fork straight through the biggest ones. That could have been a baked spud, that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to water the chilies and then I'll tag this on to the end of the video I'm doing at the end of the week. Um, getting a bit dark now. It's lovely. It really is. So, anyway, say bye bye. Brew! Look at those marrows. They're okay, aren't they? Really nice. Good pair. Um, and I've got a little confession to make. I took part in three challenges this year. There was the giant sunflower challenge from Nick's allotment and my giant sunflower snapped. There was the um, monster beetroot challenge 
and that's still growing considering it's gone to seed it's still get beefing up and I'm totally gonna win that one and then there was the marrow challenge with um, Rachel's allotment garden and these are my marrows they're alright aren't they thing is I didn't grow them um, some guy a few plots up just given them to me because um, my marrow plant was eaten I think two days after I planted it and I completely forgot to mention it so I'm sorry Rachel by default you are the winner because I'm not going to claim these as mine so I'm going to catch up with your videos and see how big your marrow is <laughs> so yeah I'm sorry I haven't updated it okay <sighs> time to go See you later guys. Hey guys, it's Sunday the 20th of August. Alan Rouge has gone to the park and typically the heavens have just opened. But it's only splitting so it's not too bad. Um, I need to be up here alone today, I need some headspace. And some calm and quiet. So this is um, a dog's bed that was given to us, that was brand new. And the sides, as you can see, dip down, we'll be taking the bottom out. Put the side and uh, the bottom on the sides raised bed so we've been doing some weeding um especially between the leaks need to do some more but um as you can see they're doing nicely now pleased with those uh, i'm going to net them no fleece them actually because the um, moth for um alliums comes around in September. Now because this year obviously it's gone very cold and um, autumn, autumnal, um, early, I want to be cautious in case they come around and get those. So I'll be fleecing those, maybe today, if not I'll do it tomorrow. And um, what I'm going to do means it's now raining, is I'm going to sort out the greenhouse. Um, put the potting table up properly, it's not on breeze blocks now. Um, I'm going to bring in the mini coal frame frames and hopefully find some pegs to put this wood here along this end. So this will be the um, tomato bed next year and then all the benches and that are going to go on this side. Um, it just needs sorting out weeding. I'm going to put some weed membrane down and get on with that. Nice little job in the greenhouse while it's raining. Um, oh, neighbour across barn neighbour, guy across plot from us just giving us a lovely cabbage so that'll be for tea later too uh, and then I'm going to harvest some beans um, I'll give up with those note, don't use old bamboo canes because they just snap in the wind um, I'm leaving them up, I'm going to try and repair them a little bit but without ripping everything out it's not worth it these beans here are already starting to die back and they're nearly done um, well, I'm not going to take them out because if there's any beans left on there, they'll dry as seed. And also they've tangled in with the bolotto quite a lot. And I don't want to pull those out and damage those. They need to dry on, this, on the canes. So, yeah. Well, what I do have is a plan for our original full plot and the new half plot. Um, that I might talk you through in a bit. Which brings them both together and will make everything much more productive this year because there's next year sorry because there's been a lot of wasted space this year okay so i'm going to start in here and i'll catch up with you in a bit bye bye is there anything more lovely than sitting in a greenhouse in the rain it's so peaceful and beautiful it wasn't a minute ago though because i've been banging the hell out of this <laughs> so um what I've done is I've levelled all that ground, scraped it back so it's all flush now and I've got these plants of wood which were off the dog bed and um, I actually got some tough tent pegs, <clears throat> knocked them in to hold it in place and it's really sturdy so they will do for now. I need to bring it further up this end, I need to move this table. Um, so this side next year will be tomatoes and what we're going to do now, well not, not now but before spring, before winter, is we're actually going to fill this up with compost and um, manure and whatnot, and just fill that up and then come spring when I want to plant my tomatoes I'll just plant through this weed membrane. It's not the best weed membrane, it's, it easily tears, it's, it's not great but it will do the job for now just to keep that down. 
and I'm hoping I've got enough left to do this side or at least most of it um, but at least it's going to keep this area weed free over the winter and then I can start piling stuff in and getting it ready which I'm really excited about Al and Rue aren't going to be having much fun at the park are they? It's way over the other side of town but I'm assuming it's raining quite heavy there too Never mind. It's lovely here in the greenhouse. <laughs> and as you can see there, I've moved the cold frame over. And it was growing a lovely crop of bindweed underneath it, um, which was over here. Um, that area here is going to be our new um, wildlife area. It's going to be a big pond and lots of flowers for cutting and wildflowers and all that too. But I'll go through the um, actual plan with you soon. Um, once we get this panel replaced we've got a paraffin heater, a greenhouse, I haven't tested it, it's a greenhouse paraffin heater, I haven't tested it so I don't know how if it works or how efficient it is but hopefully that means that um, my seedlings will be safe in here and my thinking of putting the pond next to the greenhouse is the frogs and whatnot will look after the seedlings a little bit more. Um, there'll be a few less slugs. There haven't been many this year, but because we like to manage organically, then anything that can help us with that would be great. And we're going to put some um, hedgehog houses around and things like that as well. And um, if you check the Gardener's World TV show from the 20th of today, so the 19th, so last, last night, no, Friday night, no, 18th Friday night, I keep thinking it's Saturday, um, there is a guy who has a garden and uses loads of um, reclaimed materials and all that and he got some big fence posts and drilled loads of different size holes in them from 3mm down up to 9mm and the solitary bees love them and you can make a feature of them, you can paint them nice colours and plop them around the plot so we are going to do that as well as build some book houses and um, also we had this magnificent thing, it was a big round circle which was um, like a grid mesh filled with sand, it was um, builder sand, not sharp sand and then some planting in the top and then the solitary bees would go in the side and burrow in there and then um, in the top of the different ones because there's so many different types of solitary bees they would go and burrow in the top it was fantastic, no space for that here obviously but um, any habitat for the bees has got to be good um, I better sort all this mess out and I'm actually going to try and sow some seeds um, I've got some lettuce that's to be sown in August, um, some dwarf beans which I'm pushing my luck for but I'm going to try and then um, some cabbage as well which is an early cabbage. I had a conversation with the guy across the way about the club root and he said that the early cabbages tend to do well, ones that are done now and over winter to harvest early, ones that are planted in spring to harvest late tend to get club root. So that's interesting. So I'm going to try these ones and see how we go. And um, that could be a way of getting around our club root problem, as well as buying resistant varieties. So yeah, there you go. I'll catch up with you soon. Bye bye. Okay. Right, we're going to sow some seeds. Ruth back from the park, and you're soaked, aren't you? Yeah. Look so, at my bum. I don't want to look at your bum. <laughs> your bum's all wet. So I brought in one of the um, mini cold frame things. Put that up there. Done the shelving. Um, the weed membrane was just just too short but never mind um, so these are all in here now that's it and Rue is going to fill all the seed trays so here we've got cabbage, cabbage spring hero there we go um, some dwarf beans that Rue got in her skinny jean gardener's kit didn't you and then some lettuce winter destiny which I got with my kitchen garden magazine so I thought I may as well give them a go and we sow them from August to April so they would be sowing now aren't they so Rue's going to fill up all the seed trays and what do you do you make sure it's firm don't you you don't want any air pockets in there so she's going to fill all of these up and then when we're sowing the seeds I'll show you how we do it hey Rue hi Right, Rue is going to tell you how to sow brassica seeds. Are you ready? Have you already put one in there? Yes, I've already done that one. So what do you do? What are you doing? Put a layer of dip 
Don't go too far because then it won't grow very well. They're only little seeds, aren't they? Yeah, Mummy has some little seeds. And all brassica seeds look the same, these little round seeds. Bury them up with some new no, dirt. Have you put some new dirt on the top? There we go. Bury it up like that. That one's done. Now the next one here. That's yeah. a bit too close to the edge. Can we do it a oh. bit further in? Okay. That's perfect. And two of these seeds. Like pop them in. So this is cabbage winter destiny, and um, you carry on, Rue. Do you dense, dense? Um, like I said, my um, fellow plot holder has just told me that cabbages that are planted early to be harvested early um, have more chance of not getting club root on this site. So hopefully, these will do well. Fingers crossed, Aru. Eh, Can you push that one down a little bit more? That one. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> right, so now I'm sowing the lettuce winter destiny. And it says to sow them um, a centimetre deep. So I'm going to make a couple of holes in each of these. This is just general cheap multi-purpose compost. It's not anything fancy. Yes, monkey. Are you doing this again? I'm just doing the lettuce, and then you're going to sow the beans, aren't you? So that's really strange. <laughs> lettuce seeds are very small and very light, so I'm just going to sow. I'm actually going to sow a couple per hole. That one's got more than a couple. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Um, And I'm hoping that these will be a nice tasty <laughs> lettuce for us to have. What are you doing, monkey? <laughs> Over the winter, growing in the... Um, are they to grow in the greenhouse or outside? I'm not sure. But either way, fresh lettuce over the winter <laughs> is always a treat. <laughs> now we just simply cover them back up. Oh, dear. There we go. Lettuce, winter destiny. Done. I'm going to show you how I water them in a bit. Right, first thing I've done is I've got two old plastic trays, just cheap trays, and I've filled them with water um, because the bottom watering will mean that the compost stays damp for longer, especially in a greenhouse where the water evaporates very quickly. Now, we're not going to be here every single day, so that will mean that they will last with water for a little bit longer. Also, I've got my little nozzle thing, and this is, um, people use them for, um, like, fence spraying or even weed killing, but I just, I've got one of these, it's a pump action, uh, so it gets pressure up, and then you can just water with it. Now it does have a spray nozzle on the end, but for some reason that's not working. So I'm just going to do this bit. Roo, out of the way, monkey nuts. <laughs> and so this will dampen the compost from the top, and then they will also gradually suck up the water from the bottom. I love these compaction things. It's fantastic for water and seedlings. Uh, the beans need a really good soak because if, you need that. If you think about when you're cooking beans and they take a while to soak um, before they're ready, then it's exactly the same for when you're growing them. They need to get wet and they need to swell up before they can sprout. So give them a good water. You may need to go over it a couple of times. So that's it. I'm going to leave it here. You don't need to see me watering them all. It's a bit dull. So, from Ophelia's Allotment Garden, this weekend, say bye-bye and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. We've got some um, special videos, like a little series of videos coming up soon. I just mm -hmm. need to do my planning for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope you like what we make. Yep. So, we'll see you soon.
See you soon. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.